Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hey, Greg Palmer here. Welcome to another episode of the Finnovate podcast. We've got an exciting series coming up. We're going to be chatting with our Finnovate Spring Best of Show winners. Always a really fun opportunity to connect with the companies that our audience selected as having the most innovative and creative ideas on stage. And joining me right out of the gate, we have Deepak Jain, CEO and founder of Wink. Deepak, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Greg. It's a pleasure. So uh, to kick things off, obviously, you know, anybody who wants to can go look at the full demo on Finnovate.com and see the full seven minutes. But for those of uh, our audience who haven't seen that, can you give us just some background on yourself and what Wink is all about? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm Deepak Jain, based here in Texas, uh, serial entrepreneur, have found a couple of companies in the payments and security space. Before this one, Wink was started in the summer of uh, 2021, and our uh, area of focus is biometrics, payments, and identity. We are uh, helping companies, institutions of all sizes embrace biometrics to solve uh, consumer experiences that are riddled currently with account fraud, payments fraud, or identity fraud. We are providing a solution to go passwordless and for transactions to happen without needing any information that can be easily hacked. So developing a platform that can be easily deployed by anyone uh, who's interested in utilizing biometrics to transform their uh, user experiences. Yeah, no, it's really cool technology, and I would definitely encourage anybody to take a look at the full demo. Before we get into Wink, though, we need to talk about something else, because this is not actually the first company that you've won Best of Show with on the Finnovate stage. Can you talk a little bit about your last time on our stage? And I mean, I have to also say, this is a very exclusive club. There are not very many people out there who've been to Finnovate twice and won Best of Show, let alone with two different companies that they founded. So this is very impressive. Oh, thank you, Greg. Yes, uh, my previous startup um, company called Switch uh, won Best of Show in 2016. It was a digital gifting platform, and that was a unique experience because we won that award pretty much in our very first year of um, uh, which being founded. And it was a fantastic experience to receive that validation from the audience and as well as the investors and potential customers that were attending the show. We were also able to meet some great uh, peers in the industry and really were able to use that to uh, drive a lot of visibility about that innovation that was in the digital gifting space. And uh, really the experience all in all was fantastic, which really led us to uh, do this again with uh, with me. So uh, I'm really glad to be able to... uh, to win it again with uh, with a different company. Yeah, well, certainly the experience the last time obviously set you up well. Let's dive into Wink a little bit more here because I think it's important that people understand what the technology is. A lot of companies are active in the biometric identity and payment spaces. How do you think you know, Wink is different? What sets Wink apart? Uh, well, there are various things that set us apart. The first point that I would like to mention is our is our experience and track record and positioning in the market. As I mentioned, we have been in the payments and security space for many, many years, myself uh, in uh, 20 plus years. We have collected a team of people who have come from uh, companies like Visa and MasterCard. Uh, We know exactly how things are shaping up for biometrics in the payments arena with uh, with the roadmap that the large payment networks and the large financial institutions are are looking at, so so we really really have a deep understanding of what the roadmap is. Also, in my last startup, I had a opportunity to work with some of the largest retailers 
uh, in our platform that were participating in e-commerce and we got a first-hand knowledge of what are some of the unsolved areas in terms of fraud prevention and uh, and the role of biometrics that can solve those. So we come from a vantage point that a lot of startups don't have access to. That makes us different in how we design and and create the product that can be that can have a, a large scale success. Secondly, the technology that we have put behind the platform with respect to utilizing machine learning and AI, combining various different facts uh, factors of biometric, facial recognition, uh, voice recognition, device recognition, and applying it to your common everyday experience of logging into a new website or enrolling into a new account or making a purchase in e-commerce or making a purchase in a retail store. These are everyday experiences. A lot of companies focus on just the mobile app and they don't have a, the breadth of, of uh, technology, how we utilize uh, AI behind uh, knowing that somebody's face might be uh, might be blocked or he's wearing a sunglass or a hat. Now, how do you then utilize voice recognition? How do you use liveness detection to differentiate between a live voice versus a voice coming out of a speaker? How do you use AI, the lighting in the room, to actually differentiate between a live person on the camera versus somebody replaying uh, a recorded video or or uh, using a deep fake generated by a software? How do you insert uh, different AI mechanisms? Use generative AI, which is what we're using in our voice recognition algorithms to always prompt the user to speak something slightly different uh, and to look for active keyword phrases in that technology to again differentiate between a recorded audio versus a, a, a real person speaking. So all of that deep tech with AI that we are utilizing makes us very different. And the fact that we never fall back to a password or a pin code, which a lot of other AI companies or even biometric companies do, is if their facial recognition system fails, they they drop down to your password or your pin yeah. code, which then which then leaves the door open for hackers to to you know step around the the biometrics. So the way we designed it, from the knowledge and the vantage point that we have from our team, and the technology that we have put. Um, sets us apart. And then our mission also sets us apart, which is really trying to look at the consumer engagement and see where it's going. Uh, it's no longer restricted to your phone. As you saw yesterday, Apple's announcement of a Vision Pro, they are using something called Optic ID, which takes a look at your iris, and that's how it recognizes it's you versus somebody else. So the fact that the consumer engagement is going beyond the mobile phone or the mobile app, it's going into VR, it's going into connected cars, it's going into smart homes. You're seeing self-checkout terminals at retail stores. You're seeing, you know, automated check-in at the airports. These are all, you know, moving beyond the mobile phone. So a lot of yeah. current companies in the biometrics are solely focused on a mobile app, uh, while we have developed the technology to convert any camera, irrespective of what device it's on, what use case it's being used to, into being capable of doing secure biometric authentication and payments. That really yeah. sets us apart as well. No, that, that last piece I think is really interesting. And here's where obviously the restrictions of the Finnovate demo, we weren't able to show everything that you could do. Obviously, we're not able to bring a car up there on stage to show kind of the connected car side of it. Can you talk a little bit about all the different environments that you're working in and, and why you think it's so crucial that you're able to be in all those different environments? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, the mobile phone, while it is a great, piece of technology, but it's a very, very difficult for, 
for user experiences to to be always all the time being reliant on the mobile phone, which is where we decided to uh, to unveil our technology in partnership with Qualcomm at CES this year in January, where we showed our technology running in a car. Uh, and, you know, a driver-facing camera is very important for the next generation of cars, for driver safety, for ensuring that you are not being drowsy and that you're paying attention to the road. And the same type of safety needs to be there if you are paying for something while you are talking to someone. So this concept of hands-free payments, you can't rely on a mobile phone, right? Yeah. It's that completely goes against the grain when we talk about you know driver safety. So to being able to use a camera in the car to not only recognize the driver so that you can personalize the car based on who you are, to power experiences where you can make a rental car your own car and all your subscriptions, your Spotify and everything gets loaded once you're recognized with the camera or even in commercial fleets where the same fleet is being driven by different drivers, they can actually lock the driver into the into the truck. There are many types of applications that can that can use the camera in the vehicle to not just do um, driver recognition, but also driver payments. Now that yeah. every car is coming with a Siri or an Alexa or a Google Assistant built in, you talk to your car, you're paying attention, you know. So th- those are all great experiences that this technology can power. And then it can yeah. go beyond the car into a smart home as well. You know, when you are in your home, you're already recognized. You've logged into your TV or your smart TV or your appliance. You don't have to go back and hunt for your mobile phone and make a transaction when you can do that uh, with any of those smart devices. So again, our technology can power those type of experiences. So I, I go back to the to our vision and our, you know, of what our thesis is that more and more consumers are going to make transactions on smart devices outside of the mobile phone, you know, and uh, yeah. that's where our technology can can really make a difference. Yeah, and no, I mean, I, I think it's really cool. One thing I will say, though, I always enjoy getting into a rental car and clicking all the radio presets and judging whoever was in there before on their terrible taste in music. So I don't know if I want it necessarily to automatically <laughs> log into mine. I enjoy uh, that little feeling of superiority. I'm like, you were listening to that? Come on. Um, but no, it is it is really interesting. So um, I, we, we are running out of time. I do just want to quickly touch on um, one thing before we get to our our last question, um, you know, how much of this is live and in the market right now? Uh, I think that's a really crucial piece is understanding where you are in the cycle. So really quickly there, and then we'll kind of end with a hopefully fun one. Yeah, no, I, I said it's our second year um, in 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 business. We have spent a good amount of time developing the tech and perfecting the AI, and really, as you show, saw in the demo showing the vast variety of use cases that we can power. Now we are in the stage of uh, alpha and beta trials with several large institutions. I mentioned the one with Qualcomm. We are working with a very large payment network on integrating our biometrics technology with e-commerce payments. We are also working with a very large uh, e-commerce platform that has over 50,000 merchants and unveiling our technology where any of that merchant can simply install the technology without writing any line of code and have access to the superior, highly secure, uh, passwordless payment um, experience over there. So this technology is is coming. It's going to be yeah. in in a variety of uh, uh, places where you you'll start seeing it very soon. Well, cool. there's certainly big things on the horizon, and obviously all that activity is really positive for yourselves. I want to end uh, by by kind of zooming way out. I think there is a perception sometimes, and this comes from maybe science fiction movies or books, that some of this technology, you know, relying on biometrics for payments or other aspects can bring about some, you know, dystopian consequences, for lack of a better word. Now, obviously, this is fiction. This is coming from a place where, you know, the, the movie Minority Report, I think, maybe left uh, some mental scars on a lot of people when when you think about this kind of technology. How real 
are these concerns about some of these dangers when you talk about biometrics and payments? Is this something which you know you are concerned about, or is it something which you think has been largely overblown by some of the the different pieces of media that are out there? Yeah, I mean, to be to be honest, uh, we rely on our past experience, our close cooperation with the large payment networks and the uh, and the large banks and the the very sophisticated knowledge that we have of what the regulators and the privacy uh, you know watchdogs and everybody is concerned about so we have designed the technology in such a way that this becomes more of a protector than uh, than a, a risk for most consumers and these are things like uh, making sure that a uh, consumer enrolls voluntarily into a system where their biometrics are being uh, recorded for the purpose of future authentication, where a customer has full rights to, uh, you know, withdraw and, de- and get their information deleted, uh, to proper cybersecurity, uh, third-party lab certifications that ensure that uh, no raw video or image you know, of a consumer is stored anywhere that could be vulnerable or susceptible to uh, to attacks and and really going through the industry um, uh, you know uh, cooperation to make sure that this is a safe infrastructure and consumers have shown willingness to adopt infrastructures like these and solutions like these when they are properly implemented. And an example is is your airport, uh, your check-in, and your immigration uh, uh, facilities, where uh, when you enroll someone uh, with the intent of solving a clear problem, uh, consumers are willing to participate. So my answer to that is a biometric solution properly implemented with the right architecture and the right privacy uh, guidelines in mind, which is what we have done is actually a very safe environment and it actually can protect you versus risking anything. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there are a lot of people, especially in the social media world, that have tried to use biometrics for against the user permissions to do things that uh, sort of give the industry uh, a little bit of pause of what might be some of the ill effects of biometrics. But once again, a proper implementation is what we are looking to achieve and have achieved to an extent that's going to make this a much safer thing to to adopt than anything yeah. else. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's that's really the crucial piece is doing it in uh, in a compliant way, in a way where you're working with regulators and, and also working with the end users, because I think this is an area that gets frequently overlooked in the fintech space, this kind of communicating to the customers. And I myself found myself in a position, uh, I was watching a hockey game at the Climate Pledge Arena here in Seattle, which is you know, really Climate Pledge is just Amazon. Everybody knows it, but they like to pretend that they're green. So, okay, have at it. It's the Climate Pledge Arena. And I was in one of these stores where it was, you know, scan your credit card when you go in and then pick up something and leave. And I was in a frame of mind in that moment where I was kind of in the store before I really thought about it. And then after I left, I was thinking, well, where does my image go now? How much uh, How much are they able to store here? And so I was able, because, you know, I'm kind of wired this way, I went and looked up uh, some of the fine print later on and figured out, okay, they only store it for 48 hours and some of these other pieces. Um, but that was never communicated to me as part of the process. And I think that this is a really crucial step in having people come in and enjoy that kind of experience. And it, it was a really cool experience, but I would have felt a lot better about it if I had known exactly what was happening there. And some people don't need that. And I and I think that's their right. But this is, I think, a really crucial aspect of this. So anybody who's considering getting into this space, I would say make sure you're properly communicating with people about what you're doing, why you're doing it, so that you don't end up with someone kind of walking out of there. I just wanted a beer. Hold on. Where did my face go? Who has access to my credit card information from here? So um, really interesting topic to be thinking about. Again, check out the seven-minute video available on finnovate.com slash videos. The company is called Wink. We've been talking with Deepak Jain. Deepak, thank you so much for taking the time to chat through everything with me. Thank you, Greg. Really enjoyed it.
The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening.